Wake up with the news and information you can trust. Starting your day the right way with the Andy Griffin Show. This is News Radio 890 92.5 KDXU. Good morning, everybody. 909 on KDXU. I'm Mandy Griffin. Thanks for tuning in. Lieutenant Aaron Bergquist is here. Good morning. Aaron, how many times have you been on the show now? Oh, a handful. Been a few, huh? You're like like the greatest hits guy. We got the greatest hits of SGPD with Lieutenant Bergquist. Always happy to be here. I like your name. It has a, it has a G and a Q next to each other, and a lot of people are like they they look at that and they go, "What is this like Dutch or something?" I don't know how to say that. But it's close. It's from uh, Holland. Holland. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. And then Kathy. Now I'm going to say try to say your name. Is it Freitas? Freitas. Freitas. Okay. Very cool. And Kathy is uh, in charge of animal services for St. George City, and she's the supervisor there. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, animals, well, a lot about animals, and Aaron will give us his uh, lieutenant overview uh, view <laughs> on things, and uh, Kathy will get uh, down and dirty and nitty gritty with us on uh, on some of the rules. Now, yesterday was National Dog Day, and right. I found out that there are somewhere in the neighborhood of eighty one million dogs as pets in America. That doesn't count the wild dogs. These are the 81 million dogs as pets. America has, what, less than 400 million people, so that's one dog for every five people in the country, Kathy. That's a lot of dogs. We love, our, right. we love our pets. And that doesn't count the cats and the, the, the mice and the gerbils and the parrots and, the lizards and snakes. yeah lizards and snakes and so that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of pets so so um obviously pets are important to us dogs and and cats and you know and pets are important to our society uh kathy you have a unique perspective in that you work with animals a lot yes uh do do you can, can you do you have an explanation of why pets are so important to us? What how, how does that fit in with with everything? I mean, I, I, my wife just right up front. I'm gonna say we don't have a pet. My wife has a pet a dander induced asthma, so we cannot have an animal living in our home, or she'll get very sick. And I love my wife more than I would ever love any animal, and so we don't have pets. And and so for me, I have a little bit of a hard time understanding how pets, especially dogs, have become so important to people. Do you have an idea? Companionship. It's that unconditional love, um, a connection that people feel with their with their animals. Um, animals um, can give you something in your life that sometimes people can't. Um, mm. It's that, that unconditional, quiet um, support. The old meme is uh, dogs love you unconditionally and cats love you when they feel like it, right? <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> yeah. But th- there, is th- there is that. And certainly, you know, I was raised in a house. We had pets when I was growing up. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the dogs were always happy to see you. Isn't that funny? That, no matter what, what was going on, the dog was always happy to see you. And you'd walk in and the cat would look at you. And, and I think at that moment decide, I'm either going to like you or I'm not right now. It just mm-hmm. depends on how I You're feel. very independent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a part of it is, now, do you have pets at home, Kathy? I do. Aaron, do you have pets at home? I do also, yeah. Kathy's got quite a few. She uh, She rescues all the the fun ones <laughs> you bring special needs animals, i have a couple right? special needs dogs um wow. a cat a few rabbits she has a dog that can only eat from like a straw she blends <laughs> she has to blend this animals to he can't open his day. mouth yeah so how did can, does he know how to use a straw no he's joking no no oh, straw okay. <laughs> but so he does have how do to you get food into i do it. have to blend his food and he sticks his whole face into it and sucks it up, and sucks it up. Mm-hmm. wow like a straw that's pretty cool. I like to imagine yeah. he's using a straw. <laughs> Got an Arctic circle and get him a milk. <laughs> and then I have I have a a dog that I rescued from our shelter. Also, he's, okay, he's a, an addition to our family. Nice. What kind of dog is it, Aaron? He's an Australian Shepherd. Okay. Full energy. Fairly big then. Australian he, Shepherd. Yeah, he's about fifty pounds. Okay. He's a big guy. Nice. Outdoor dog, high mm, energy. Nice. Well, I, you know, I, and I, when, in saying I don't have a pet, I, I, I did not mean to say I don't like pets or I wouldn't have one if I couldn't. But I, like I said, I love my wife more. So, uh, in, in, she always used to joke, oh, you can have a dog when I'm dead. And I'm like, well, <laughs> don't die then because I'm good. We're, we're okay. But, uh, some of the things that I see a lot on social media, Kathy and Aaron is, is 
a lot of people talking about, well, this dog was off leash. And, you know, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people will go out to the trails. They want to do, tra my brother's a trail runner, and, and a lot of people go on the trails, they're either running or they're walking fast or they're hiking or whatever. And what a perfect time to take your dog off the leash and let him go chase rabbits or something, right? I mean, that's that's kind of, I think, what people feel. But Kathy and Aaron, what's what's wrong with that? Um, we have a city ordinance that states anytime your dog is off of your property, it needs to be leashed. Ooh, yeah. So it's against the law. It is. We have two mm. dog parks um, in the city where your dog can be off leash. Other than that, parks, trails, um, everywhere, your dog has to be leashed. Yeah, mm. just because you trust your animal and your animal trusts you doesn't mean that they won't do something unexpectedly or someone else's dog won't do something unexpectedly. Right. and. And so then we can run into some issues there. And that, I think you're you, you're actually hitting to the heart of things, Aaron. Is is that people say, "Well, my dog would never bite anyone else, or my dog would never chase another dog, or, or whatever." They they think they know. Yeah. And and I've heard that. Man, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that, and probably not as many as you guys have heard that. Is oh, my dog wouldn't do that. Well, your yeah. dog did do that. Yeah. Well, the leash law protects your dog as well. Um, we get so many calls um, where there was a dog fight, an altercation between two dogs where one dog was leashed and the other one wasn't. Mm. The off-leash dog was friendly and would run up to a leash dog that is not friendly, and oh, it causes yeah. a dog fight. So. Mm. That's tough. Mm -hmm. Is there any recourse law-wise for someone if that happens? Mm -hmm. They can receive a citation, a dog at large citation. And, and I guess once you have the citation, if 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 it ends up with a human getting injured, then maybe a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could be civilly held liable. Uh, the owner of the the pet that attacked could be civilly liable. Yeah, that's and and we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want anybody to get hurt. Of course, uh, is let's talk about the dog parks a little bit. Um, I I've never participated in a dog park because I don't have dogs, but we lived right next to one. Uh, and you said, Aaron, there's two of them here in the city. Where are they? We've got one on the west side and one on the east side. So over off uh, Dixie Downs is one. Okay. And then we've got one that is down on uh, just behind Dixie High School Snow Park. Um, and those are kind of obviously not enough. We need we need more. And so the city's planning on adding a few, a, a couple more dog parks in our in our area. So we're excited about that. Okay. Utilizing okay. some of the desert next to some parks already can you explain to people what a dog park is maybe for those that, that aren't sure they maybe drive by and go now what is that yeah it's just kind of a designated area where you can let your dog off leash and let them socialize with other animals in the dog park and they can run around and play and hmm. and and so and it's, it's okay it's in that spot to take the leash off my dog and let him run around that's the only the only spot in the city which is why we need more of them okay Okay, that's, that may make sense. Now, what if there is an incident in a dog park? We talked about this off air, but maybe, Kathy, if you could explain a little bit to us the liability uh, of what, say, a human is attacked or two dogs get in a dog fight inside a dog park. What what happens then? Um, well, a dog park is enter at your own risk. We we would expect people to follow the rules. There's a small dog side and a large dog side. Okay. Uh, don't take your dogs to the dog park if they're known to be aggressive with other animals. Um, be safe and be smart about it. Um, but because it is an enter at your own risk, dog fights happen. Um, there's nothing that we would do about a dog fight that happened in a dog park. That's the owner's responsibility is to break it up and make sure it doesn't happen. Okay. Buyer beware or whatever. Yeah. Or just to yeah, understand that... Yeah. Uh, you're taking on the responsibility of yeah. you know, hopefully your dog behaving and now if okay. a person if a person gets bit in a dog park we still uh, need to do a bite investigation where we check for rabies vaccinations do a, a bite quarantine and all of that kind of stuff now I know you're not a lawyer but I would assume at that point if I go into a dog park I'm kind of giving up the right of you know assuming someone if their dog bites me right I mean I, yeah I don't know yeah that yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't want to give out any nope. legal advice here. We get in big trouble. I think. Yeah. I think you'll find most of our dog parks. The the citizens that utilize them fairly consistently, they become pretty good friends. Yeah. And, and same with the dogs. The dogs get to know the other dogs, and it and it's a fairly positive thing in the life of that animal to go and just like children go to the park and play with other kids. They they really enjoy that. You talked about big versus little dogs. There are exactly two different portions of the parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our parks are separated the... for small dogs. And Is there a wing? Cut off or? I think that I think there's a sign posted, but I think it's just kind of on the owner. Because I wondered if I had a medium dog, how do I, you know, which side do I go to? Use you your get, best judgment. Yeah, you yeah. know, you know your animal and and how they like to play or how aggressive they can be, and so put them in with the Great Dane if they can handle it. Yeah, that's a big that's a big dog. <laughs> 
I, I was reading yesterday uh, one of the true in, in the, one of the stories I wrote about uh, dogs. The tallest dog in the world, living dog right now in the world, is three feet eleven, eight something. Anyway, three feet eleven or something. It's a Great Dane. And if you think about how tall that is, I know humans who are about five feet tall. So that's most of a, a human. That's a small horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a big pretty dog. Pretty much, like a yeah. pony. <laughs> uh, so uh, what what kind of dogs do you uh, – what are the big common dogs uh, right in southern Utah right now? What are you, what are you seeing a lot of? Oh, lots of um, labs, Aussies. We have a lot of um, cattle dogs like healers and um, mm-hmm. um, pit bulls. Then there's a lot of small dogs, chihuahuas and pomeranians. Do uh, do are, are labs so popular because of their personalities? Is that probably yeah? They're a, they, they're a great family dog. My um, brother had a lab. Tempered. It just seemed like such a happy dog all mm-hmm. the time. You yeah. know, yeah. Golden Retrievers labs are pretty yeah. popular. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Irish Setters too. Although I understand, I, I've heard Irish Setters don't have a very long lifespan. They, yeah, they're not I had an Irish past. Setter growing up. Love it's that a, dog. Yeah, Golden Doodles are pretty popular right now too. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody's trying to get their hands on like the mini. Aren't those expensive though? Well, they're popular, so yeah, yeah. you've got. <laughs> now, what? How, how do you guys feel about like the pet stores, the, the where you can go and buy these designer dogs and have the AKC, and the, you know, they're is, is that a a pock mark on the dog world, or is that it's okay? They 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 should have a right. What do you think, Kathy? Kathy's looking at me. She wants <laughs> yeah, me, she wants no, me to take this one. Say, <laughs> okay, Aaron, what do you think? I think. It, it comes down to the to the consumer, right? It's like if you are looking for a specialized something, then then you're gonna go you're gonna go where you know you can get it, right? It's like buying a car. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want a very specific brand and make and model, then you're gonna go where you, where you can find that. Some people care more about that. Some people care more about just uh, there are lots of needy animals, and you can you can get them at shelters, and you can get them from rescues, and so it really comes down to. Who's who's getting the dog and and what they want and what they're looking for in that relationship? How full are we right now, Kathy? Full. We're completely full. One hundred percent full. Yep. What what's there, there, there have been a, there has been a movement at zero no kill shelters and mm-hmm. is is, your, is our shelter a no kill shelter? Mm-hmm. We it operate is? under a no kill philosophy. So what happens when you get full? Um, we we try harder. Uh, we do a lot of a lot of advertising. Um, we push our animals on social media. We um, lower or waive adoption fees. Um, we'll do anything we can. Reach out to rescues. Sometimes there are rescue specific or breed specific rescues where we can send some of our dogs that we have. Huh. It is uh, so. If I were, wanted to adopt a dog, and you, you hear all these different stories, and, I, and and you can confirm whether or not they're true. For instance. Older dogs tend to not get adopted as often. Is that true? Um, sometimes it takes a little longer for them to get adopted, um, but there are families out there that want that. They want that that low energy, um, easy care um, older dog. A lap dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pit bulls get kind of a, a bad rap, and so yeah, we, they do. we tend to those are those guys kind of have a harder time getting adopted but we've got specific uh rescues that just work with pit bulls and Hmm. and some of those are in idaho and some are different states and so we'll reach out to those rescues specifically when we've got a pit that that's a little more aggressive and needs help we also Hmm. have some some uh animal trainers in the area that work with us for free and if we've got an animal that that is having behavior problems and can't get adopted then they'll take that animal for a month or a month and a half and Mm -hmm. and that's cool train him and then bring him back to us and then we can adopt them out or if someone will adopt them they'll take they'll offer to work with that animal with that owner Mm -hmm. we have a dog right now at dogtown doing a board and train if anyone's interested in her they can go and see her there and training is is offered after her adoption as well what kind of dog is that she's a little uh, pit mix pit mix Mm -hmm. interesting so uh the reputation of pit bulls uh the you know uh and and there are story real stories out there uh just I think it was two years ago, a lady was killed in her backyard by her son had pit bulls and, and it was her house, but they were his dogs and uh, sadly they attacked and, and ended, ended up killing her. So the stories are real. They are out there, but do you think pit bulls have a reputation that is over-exaggerated? Is, I, I, deserved, I think it, I think it think? all goes to the to the nature nurture kind of thing it's 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 i mean obviously they have a a tendency to to be kind of primary primarily more aggressive but Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they can be trained and they can be loved and nurtured and 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 
and be perfectly safe animals. The thing that, you know, Lieutenant, the, the thing that bothers me a little bit is if you get an ab- aggressive breed like the pit bulls and then you get a human who is willing to, not only willing to, but wants them to be aggressive and mean and, and attack people, uh, that that bothers me because it, it there's no it seems like to me there's no recourse to punish the human for making the dog this way you know the yeah, dog they, gets they the blame be used as a weapon right yeah and that's not fair to, to the dog it's not know? I would consider that abuse right yeah it's like, yeah I've, it's like raising a child that way to to be more aggressive and to be more criminal minded I don't I, I've ne- I've never heard of a human being charged for the way a dog behaves, except for if the if the human specifically sick the dog on someone else. But it seems like to me, in some instances, that should be that should be a charge. It should be real, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think if you had like uh, if you had evidence to support that they that they use the dog as a weapon, it would be interesting to talk with the prosecutor and see if you could charge an aggravated assault in that in that mm-hmm. way or. I, that story that I was referring to a couple of years ago was up in I think Sugar House or something where the lady was killed by dogs that her, that her son owned in the I think there were two two adults and two two uh, youth basically adolescent dogs uh, that that killed his mother and uh, the court tried to argue that he trained the dogs to be aggressive that to the point that um, he's the reason that she was killed and unfortunately the judge was like no. Not not yeah. buying that one. I don't but know too many of case case laws. That, that would be hard to prove, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did have two pits that uh, that were very aggressive, and we couldn't we couldn't get them put we couldn't get them adopted, and and our staff couldn't handle them safely, and so there, we were in a real tough situation. Rescues couldn't take them; their their behavior mm. was gone, and so we were able to find two uh, a couple in Las Vegas that that was willing to take take on the animals, and so they took both of them. Wow! And and they're doing great today. And, and were they they're super friendly? Brother, and sister, brother, brother. Were they related? Brother, yeah, yeah, related pets. Mm. And they were. It was kind of a cool story. And so they they every now and again we get photos from them, and they're they're doing great. So there's there's people out there that that are willing to work with these kinds of animals and mm. and and give them that that trust and love that that they need to be successful and live their best lives. All right, let's clear some things up. How many pets are you allowed to have in a single household in in Saint George City? <laughs> You're allowed to have two dogs. Um, two and, dogs, because mm-hmm. I know people with three. Yep, two dogs. A lot of people with three. You're allowed to bit. have two, and you, um, unless your property backs up to open space, um, then you're allowed to have four. Really? So it depends on zoning. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I guess I'm thinking about my house. We have a park behind us, a forest park over there in Middleton. Mm-hmm. That's not really open space. It so needs that to be qualify. actually zoned open space. It's okay. a zoning thing, yeah. Okay. So two pets. So if you have more than two dogs, just just dogs, two dogs. Okay. What if I also have a cat and a gerbil? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Nope. How many cats am I allowed to have? Same. Um, mm-hmm. There's no. We have no limit. No limit on no. cats. So no, the, but, the, the but cat lady with thirteen be, yeah. cats is okay. But it does need That's to why be. Why that happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> it does need to be managed. So there are. Um, we have a TNR program. It's our trap neuter release. Um, we make sure that the cats are fixed and vaccinated and mm. cared for. Yeah. Um, it has to be kept clean. It has to be kept manageable. And um, we don't let just cats overrun a place that we would look into that and and try to help have we had that issue ever in st george that you're aware of where where there was too many cats. too many animals in oh, one yeah. house oh yeah it happens all the time yeah really mm-hmm. yeah oh so if i said have we had that issue you're like yeah boy have we had that yeah, issue. That pit bull story i told you was actually a house that had i think six pits six, I, don't, I don't recall yeah i think we took six to eight pits out of that house wow mm-hmm. wow uh, right here in St. George, huh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, as far as adopting a pet, uh, I touched on it at the start of the show, Kathy. People, especially a dog, they see a dog at a pet store or even a, a, in a shelter, and they say, hey, I want to take this dog home. I think this is going to be the perfect dog for my family. And then people get them home, and they realize, uh, I can't really just leave on vacation now. I can't just leave the dog here for a week. That no, you can't do that. Uh, or uh, you know, I'm gone to work all day, and and you know, I'm gone from seven a.m. to six p.m. And this poor dog is alone for eleven hours, and he's 
eating, you know, tearing my pillows open or or or, or scratching the, the 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 baseboards. My daughter has a dog that likes to eat the chew on the baseboards of her house, mm-hmm. and and, uh, and so they go, okay, this was a mistake. I need to get rid of this dog, and so they take the dog to the shelter, mm-hmm. right? Isn't that the first re- first thing everyone thinks? Oh, I'll just take him to the shelter. But wh- why is that a problem? And and tell us about kind of the what what you guys have to deal with when that happens. Um, well, as far as adopting a dog, breed matters. Do your research. Mm. Um, you know, there's there's a, a different personalities, different um, um, different breeds for different things. So look at your lifestyle, look at what you're looking for, and do your research before adopting an animal. Um, as far as after you adopt a dog, we talk about the the three rule. Um, it takes them three days to decompress. So give them that three days. They're not going to be themselves for a little bit. Okay. Three days to decompress, three weeks to learn your routine, and then three months to feel at home. So hmm. we ask after you adopt a dog, give it some time. Don't immediately turn around and go, this isn't a good fit for me. Um, give it some time. And then if it's not working out, we want you to um, rehome it. We don't want you to to live with a dog or you're not happy, the dog's not happy. Um, find it a place where everyone is is um, content. So your first, your default reaction shouldn't be, oh, I'm just going to take them to the shelter. Mm-hmm. Try, right. try it first to get someone who will try yeah Yeah. try see if you can give them some time to settle in um and then we we ask that you try to rehome the dog on your own um if it goes from family to family that's better for the dog to not have to enter the system and not have to be in a shelter environment um but if if you need to rehome your dog we're here to help so I, I had a friend, and I can't even remember that it was it was some foreign sounding. Uh, oh, maybe it was a Bichon Frise. Is that is that a dog breed mm-hmm. that, that that popped Bichon into my Frise. head? Uh, and and uh, they were so focused on they wanted that specific dog. Uh, why is it a mistake to focus on just one breed when when uh, it seems like you need to be maybe a little more flexible when you're talking about adopting an animal? Well, I don't know if it's inflexible. I think people get an idea in their head of exactly what they want. And if they've done their research and that's the dog that's going to fit their lifestyle, then uh, go for it. Find that dog. There's um, breed-specific rescues where you can find it. There's um, licensed breeders if you want to go that route. Um, but but sometimes uh, you'll find something that you're not expecting. If you go into a shelter and look around, you'll see hmm. you'll see something jump out at you that's a that's a better fit. Hopefully not literally jump out at you, though, like the pit you were talking about. But uh, okay, uh, now w- one of the problems we have as uh, as uh, humans is we see a puppy and we go, "Oh, the puppy is so cute! I gotta have me that puppy." Well, that puppy grows into a seventy pound whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, you know leaves leaves deposits on your carpet and eats a lot of food, and 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 you know then you get. Like what? What did I get myself into? What What's the best way for people to deal with the idea of the the puppy love kind of thing? Donny Osmond, puppy love. Yeah. I think like Kathy was saying, it's it really goes to your research. Like how what's the lifespan of this animal? What the, oh. what's the size? What's the the behavior uh, characteristics? How how much energy do they have? Like if you're just going into a, a finding a puppy and just getting it for valentine's day for a loved one or or christmas or something like that just because it's a puppy like that's probably not going to end well yeah that's a mistake right giving a dog as a present right it happens all the time (laughs) we'll get get an influx of animals usually right around valentine's day Uh, right around after a little bit on christmas too right after christmas i'm gonna get the kids a puppy and yeah my my son by the way has uh he had a couple of boxers the boxers are an extremely, extremely mellow breed. Really, really great dog, but they have a very short lifespan. And uh, when his first boxer died, he was like, "Uh, oh, you know, so sad. I, you know, didn't I only live seven years, six, yeah, whatever six, it was." Years. And uh, I said, "Well, I, I've heard boxers have really short lifespans." He go, "Oh, they do." I said, "Did you know that?" "Yeah, I knew that." So it was, I, I was trying to be empathetic to him, but at the same time, I was like, you know. If you did your homework, you, and he did, and you knew it was a short lifespan, and he did, uh, then he should have known that you know you're going to have to say goodbye to these dogs a little sooner than yeah. maybe bigger you dogs to. tend to live shorter. I had two Chihuahuas, and and I had them for yeah. uh, seventeen years. Really, yeah, <laughs> lived and lived and lived yeah. and lived. Yeah, about as old as my kids almost. I grew up with a dog named Mopsy a Beagle, and Mopsy lived 
13, 14 years, and actually she got hit by a car. So we don't know how long she would have, but she was definitely getting old by the time that, in fact, she, she probably got hit by the car because she couldn't get out of the way because she was moving real slow at, the, at that point. Uh, but uh, it, we adopted Mopsy and Samantha was the other beagle. Uh, we adopted at the same time, and Samantha did not live very long, but Mopsy lived for years and years and years and years. So uh, I don't see that many beagles anymore. I guess they're still around, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're still yeah, beagles. They're we also had a basset hound when uh, many years ago, but uh, this was the biggest chicken basset hound. It might have been a chicken in real life because it was scared of everything. <laughs> Yeah, you'd sneeze and it would go cower under the couch or whatever. So, uh, uh, but uh, I anticipated, we, we ended up having to give her away, but uh, I anticipated the, this basset hound of ours having back problems along the way because uh, anybody that knows basset hounds are these big, long dogs and like dachshunds that have the, the elongated spine and that can't be good for anybody, right? Yeah, they can get, just like humans, right? The, the yeah, health problems I have a long spine that. too, yeah. <laughs> and then depending on how, how nutritious your diet is, you can have issues all right let's do this let's get a weather break in when we come back let's talk with kathy and uh, aaron and uh, lieutenant and, and uh, lieutenant bergquist and uh, uh I don't, do i call you officer freitas or supervisor for i don't did you have a title uh, supervisor supervisor Freitas. all right we'll, we'll talk about dog proofing your home some of the things you need to be aware of and things that are poison to your pets there are some plants out there that are not good for your pets when we come back Wake up with the news and information you can trust. This is the Andy Griffin Show on News Radio 890, 92.5 KDXU, Southern Utah's News Talk Leader. Welcome back. I'm Andy. In a few minutes, we're going to give away a couple of couple of combo meals to Wendy's. So uh, I just wanted to make Stockton aware. He's over there going, yeah, right, yeah he's on it. He's got it. Uh, we are talking dog today. Uh, yesterday was National Dog Day in America. 81 million pet dogs in America. That's a lot of dogs. And my wife was joking that there are almost as many dogs in America as there are bicycles in Amsterdam. We, we just went on a vacation to Europe and... Uh, Amsterdam, first of all, no, no fat people because they all ride bikes all day long. And second of all, they, they told us, the guides told us that bikes get the right of way over pedestrians, over cars, over anything. Bikes always have the right of way in Amsterdam. So, uh, it's kind of a weird thing because it, it, they have, uh, every street has a bike lane and, and, and if you walk into the bike lane and the bike's coming, you better get out of the way because they will run you down. <laughs> Good to know. So. Talking with Lieutenant Aaron Bergquist from the St. George Police Department and Supervisor of the Animal Services, Kathy Freitas. And uh, Kathy and Aaron, thank you for coming. Appreciate you guys. Happy yeah. to be here. Um, talk about dog proofing your house a little bit. What are some of the things that we need to do? If we're going thinking about getting a dog, uh, probably, I mean, you don't have to maybe child proof your house and block off all the all the uh, outlets, you know, so your kid doesn't stick the finger in the outlet. But you do have to do a few things for a dog, right? Mm -hmm. You do. Make sure there's not things laying around that they're going to chew, especially if it's a puppy. You want to um, keep things off the floor, um, electrical cords, keep them out of the way. Um, puppies just have a tendency to chew on things. So you want to offer mm. things that they can chew okay. to keep them busy and just make sure there's not things laying around that will hurt them. Anything else you, you need to worry about? Uh, Dogs aren't gonna like bite an electrical wire or things like that, right? Puppies uh, will chew on on, on electrical anything, cords. Huh? Yeah, okay. puppies will chew on anything. So just if you're, um, you know, keep, um, keep an eye on them, and if that seems like it's something that your puppy's gonna chew on, you would want to um, protect them from that. Okay. I, my my daughter lived in an apartment complex for a while. Uh, it was in Washington City, so it wasn't St. George, but uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> to me, this seems so silly. When you move in, it, it was pet, a pet-friendly complex, but when you move in, you had to provide a um, sample. Uh, okay, I'm going to say a fecal sample from your dog, and they would put the dog's DNA in their database. And if, yeah, if you if your dog pooped on public areas in the things, they would trace the DNA, and you could be fine. I think it was like 100 bucks or something <laughs> for your dog pooping in the public areas never heard of that yeah that was news, like that's news to me i was like are they serious is that it seems like they ought to have worth like parking or, or crime or something not dogs 
you know, DNA. We do, we do get a lot of, uh, like, the ring cameras and stuff like that where they'll send us evidence of, of a neighbor's dog pooping in their yard and, and ask us to come out. They want out you to do something? And come out and, and what can you do? that. We, we could issue a citation, but um, typically we try to <laughs> educate and, and, and see if we can't find a peaceful solution. <laughs> But okay. I think the, bo- the okay. bottom line is clean up after your animal, right? If you're walking your animal and he does his business in your neighbor's yard, uh, be responsible. Yeah, clean I it agree. Up. I agree. But there are people that don't. There yeah, sure are. Unfortunately. Um, all right. Let, let's get off of dogs for just a second and talk about uh, other animals. I just saw a video. It was up in, in the Utah County, uh, uh, one of those ring cameras or whatever, and a mountain lion was wandering through someone's yard. Do we have need to worry do we have wild animals of that size especially in southern utah absolutely yeah Yeah. we do Mm -hmm. and and is it relatively common i wouldn't say that it's common but we've had it in my career i've had we've had we had a a rash of a mountain lion being sighted on our bike path um i've had a mountain lion in someone's backyard up here downtown um in those situations we'll call in dwr and they they tend to they that's what they do is they deal with all the the wild animals generally speaking and we're not trying to scare people at all uh, generally speaking the wild animals don't want to be around you humans you know uh and, and but it, occasionally we do cross paths rattlesnake or, or a, a mountain lion or cougar or uh i don't know i guess the coyotes occasionally in the area but uh, you, you you guys basically it's not something we need to stay up at night worrying about it's not common no. rattlesnakes probably more common we we deal with snakes fairly frequently but um we'll come out we'll come out and remove those for you and, and i was gonna say, i was gonna say what, what what's the procedure if there's a rattlesnake in my driveway if it's if it's somewhere where it can just go off and be on its own um just leave it be give it some space it'll move on um if it's in your living area if it's in your home or garage um we obviously don't want you in uh, at risk so we'll come in and remove that and uh, relocate it there's actually some uh, interesting science going on with rattlesnakes and their venom they're actually finding lots of cures to some some pretty bad illnesses really using Hmm. rattlesnake venom it seems like uh, and i actually had a friend who her goal in life and she was pursuing that goal was to be uh, the person that studied rattlesnakes and extracted venom from them to help save people's lives. Yeah. Uh, anti, they, uh, make the anti-venom. They will go out and, and find them up. It's pretty common up north, and the research is being done out of Colorado, and they'll they'll go trap a lot of wild rattlesnakes and, and <laughs> give them to this, transport them to that program. And You could not pay me enough money for <laughs> to do that job. I am not interested at all in You've that You've got to be a snake person. It's, <laughs> it's a different kind of person. Yeah, I like snakes. Rattlesnakes are protected. So um, if there is one in your home or in your garage, in your yard, please don't kill it. Give us a call yeah. and we'll, we'll remove it for you. Generally speaking, we should only kill them if they are threatening us, Absolutely. right? There's, yep. if, if it's slithering if it's across your lawn, don't, don't mm-hmm. chase it down and hack it to death. That's, right. that's right. terrible. So, All right, Rhonda on line one is with us. Rhonda, thanks for calling in. Uh, you have a question for Kathy and w- for Lieutenant Berquist. Oh, not a question. I was just going to, you were talking about things that are detrimental to dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was watching Dr. Pohl last night, and a little one-year-old puppy ate sugarless gum. And apparently it's detrimental to their liver. And so you have to wonder if sugarless gum isn't detrimental to human livers, too. I don't know. (laughs) And the other other thing is, is chocolate can kill your little dogs. Okay. And no chocolate. Don't leave chocolate laying around. And grapes are bad. And also uh, pork uh, is uh, can cause pancreatitis. Really, I did in a know dog. That. Don't give your dogs pork. Oh man, that's, that's all I have to say. <laughs> okay, thank you, Rod. I appreciate you calling pork. Huh? I hadn't heard that one. Now, with the gum specifically, it's the xylitol in sugarless gum, and xylitol is found in other foods as well. So you want to make sure that you're not giving your dogs anything that has xylitol really? in it. Huh. There are some, um, even some peanut butters have that in there. So you want to check your labels and make sure. There's nothing more fun than giving your dog peanut butter and seeing him. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it's a natural peanut butter yeah, with no right. xylitol. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, all right, uh, I got a text here. It said two weeks ago in California, a woman was mauled to death when they went into the area. They found 25 Great Danes, which are normally not an aggressive dog. 
but said five of them had DNA in them that showed that they were the dogs that actually killed the woman. So I have never heard of a Great Dane being that aggressive. Uh, she said 25 Great Danes in 25 Great Danes. That's a lot of so that's where big you, dogs. So that's where you get into that pack mentality yeah. where it oh. just, um, and that can happen with any breed, um, where they, they pack up and um, their instincts kick in. Yeah, that's one thing I think we take it for granted in, as Americans is is how awesome our animal control is in the country. If anybody's been to a third world country, you'll see just how quickly canines can get out of hand and, and be in that pack mentality. Hmm. That's it. It's a big part of law enforcement, isn't it? Making sure that our animals are, are pets, not it can predators. Really, it can really get out of hand quickly and cause a quality of life issue that... That we enjoy here with because we have great animal control. Well, said so some other things to worry about uh, with your dogs, uh, especially in your yard. Uh, toxic flowers. There are certain flowers. Let's see, azaleas, uh, aloe, oleander, sago palm are just a few of the toxic flowers that can actually kill your pets. Uh, cocoa mulch. Now it says most owners, uh, pet owners, know chocolate can be toxic for your dog, but a popular. Uh, made from the, uh, popular mulch made from theobromine and caffeine. Ingredients in chocolate and cocoa can be just as toxic for Fido. Uh, lawn chemicals. Now, you you want to treat your lawn, right? Kill pests, kill kill uh, grubs, maybe kill weeds. But lawn chemicals is that is that harmful to your animals? I'm sure there are some that are pet safe. I don't um, I don't know which ones are and which ones aren't. But if you have somebody that's taking care of your of your lawn, ask them if what they're using is pet safe. Okay. Now we've heard about the algae that's growing in like Zion National Park and stuff, and and I, I think a dog even died right in this algae. Maybe more than one. What is the algae, and what do we need to be aware of in that situation? It's a blue green algae, and it is toxic to dogs. So just um, so do they eat it, or do they ingest it when they in swim? The wa- when they get in the water and they okay. drink it, yeah. So they're ingesting it, um, mm. and I've heard of of many dogs that have become sick from it. It depends on the on the the how how much is there right now. Yeah. So you can check. Where can you check to see? How much of the algae is? I think it's on one of the state websites. I'm not sure exactly which yeah. one. But. Yeah. Just be safe and check and see what the algae level is before taking your dogs down to the Is river. this stuff you can identify by, by sight? Like you see you see some algae that is, I mean, I don't know. Is it? I don't know if it's always visible. Okay. So it could actually be there and we don't, we don't know for sure or not. So definitely something to keep aware of. Uh, and by the way, even in a national park, I think you're still supposed to have your dog leashed, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So oh, absolutely. If your dog's running into getting the, the the creek or or whatever because you let him go, that's that's a no no. Mm-hmm. So, all right, we'll take another break. Be right back, folks. All the latest news, weather, traffic, and sports, just like you like them. You're waking up with the Andy Griffin Show on News Radio 890, 92.5 KDXU, Southern Utah's News Talk Leader. Welcome back. I'm Andy. Lieutenant Aaron Bergquist is to my left, and right in front of me is Kathy Freitas, and we're talking animals today. And uh, Lieutenant Bergquist, you tell me that we are building a new shelter, a second shelter? Yeah, it's actually pretty exciting. Um, we're fortunate in our area to be so supported by our, our local officials and our and our city government. Um, our shelter's been uh, a source of, of needed updates for some time. We built our our shelter back in 89 and so okay. our current that was shelter before i was here even our current shelter is is uh uh lacking in some areas we're about uh 2400 square feet for for what we're dealing with and and That's we need a much, regular sized house i guess much yeah. much more space than that and so we have been approved by the city to to put in a new shelter which is a, a an amazing capital project for the city they uh picked a lot for us down close to the animal treatment plant or i'm sorry the <laughs> water treatment plant <laughs> those, are two, di- animals those are two very different things yes, they are. <laughs> and uh and so we've, we're gonna have go from 2400 square feet to almost uh 15,000 square feet wow um, big and and that's going to be amazing for our staff and for the animals and for the future of of animal control in in st george now will kathy be moving over then to the new facility all She'll right yeah absolutely very cool oh. uh but 2400 square feet is what you're dealing with right now huh that is not big it's it's very small wow Okay, now you mentioned that you're full. 
Uh, and and this obviously will give the the, the animal shelter a lot more capacity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I think, oh, you, okay, you got dogs in every every kennel, every every mm-hmm. spot, but you don't have just dogs, right? You have other animals. Correct. We have we have dogs, cats, rabbits. Occasionally, we have chickens, um, guinea pigs, hamsters. We've got three birds right now. Um, now, you, now, uh, he, I, I don't think he literally perked up over there, but I know Stockton. Stockton is a bird guy. Mm-hmm. Stockton has how many birds? Stockton three or two? I have three cockatiels. Three cockatiels. Okay. I believe we have two cockatiels available for adoption at the shelter. Two cockatiels and a parakeet. I now believe. You, now I you think can that's have five. <laughs> you, Unfortunately, you, I just moved to a new place, and I don't think the three birds are used to the place yet, let alone two extra birds. <laughs> but that is nice to know. So the shelter does have birds. We do. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Three, three, three rule, right? You, you get you got three days to get used yeah. to your place, and <laughs> yeah, so and then get three more birds. Or in something. fact, in our new shelter, we're hoping to have an, an Avery. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would love oh, no. that. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. I'll wait when you guys have a cockatoo and an African gray. That'd oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we got about three minutes left. Uh, by the way, Brenda by, is the winner of our Wendy's deal. And I wanted to ask Kathy, you said off the air, rabbits actually make really good pets. So you've got three minutes to make your case for rabbits. They do. Rabbits can be great house pets. Um, you can They can be litter box trained. Um, they really? Have so great you can actually get your rabbit to mm-hmm. run around the house, but when it's time to go to the bathroom, it will actually go in they the, use litter, the litter box. box. That's yep. amazing. Yeah. I didn't know so that. So my rabbits run around with the dogs and the cat, and um, they have each they have individual personalities just like cats and dogs do. Um, absolute fantastic pets. Now, do do rabbits bite people? They can, yes. They can yes. if they're mad. Yeah. Okay, does yeah. it hurt? Does it does it draw blood? Is it? It can, yeah. Yeah, really. Uh-huh. You wouldn't think a rabbit killer bunnies, you know. Yeah. You you wouldn't think the rabbit would would actually do no, that. We, you can you can get a spicy bunny for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, is that when you cook it up? It's spicy? No, no, that's not what you meant. That's why we that's grew up on Bugs Bunny cartoons, right? It's like Bugs Bunny was an aggressive yeah. bunny. Yeah, but he wouldn't bite anybody, would he? Yeah, just Elmer. He's but we have, we have two yeah. rabbits at the shelter right now that are available for adoption, too. So. Okay. And these are the non-biting kind. Non-biting right? kind, yeah. yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you see an influx around Easter of uh, chicks and, and bunnies? We do, yeah. Yeah. Yep, because people get them for their kids um, as babies and don't realize they didn't put their um, homework into it and didn't realize the amount of care and time that it needs to take care of them. So, we actually partner with our parks department too in some of our city parks. Then they take take our rabbits and have mm-hmm. some livestock areas for us for goats and rabbits and a petting zoo type thing. Or? Yeah, Segmiller yeah. Park down off three thousand East. We've got a kind of a, an an area for livestock animals mm-hmm. that are from the shelter. Yeah, our rabbits are at Seg Miller Farm right now. You can see them down there. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That's really cool. And our rabbits as fluffy and loving as... I actually had a rabbit when I was a kid, so I love rabbits, too. There's yeah. different breeds. So there's just as many different breeds of rabbits as there are dogs. Really? So, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yep. Hmm. I thought that everybody thinks cottontail and jackrabbit, yep. and that's about <laughs> it, right? So... All right, so uh, adopt a, adopt an animal today. They are absolutely full. You would love for people to come down. What's the best way? We've got le- about a minute. The best way for people if they want to adopt an animal. Call the shelter, 435-627-4350. Call and schedule an appointment to come in. We do take walk-ins. If you didn't schedule an appointment, you can come up, and if we have somebody available to help you, we'll help you. Also, our social media, our animal, St. George Animal Shelter, social media, Facebook page, you can see. You have, you have pictures of the animals mm-hmm. up? Yep. See yeah. all of our animals. Yeah, wow. Very cool. Well, I encourage people to adopt a dog from the animal shelter, not pay a million dollars for the pet store to buy a dog because you have just as good a dogs and maybe they don't have the papers, some of them, but you still still have some pretty cool animals over there. A lot so. of need out there. Aaron, Kathy, thank you so much for coming thanks, on Andy. today. Thank you, Andy. It's been an ab- absolute pleasure. We'll be back tomorrow. More Andy Griffin Show tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in today.